Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. Let's take a look at our morning update so far, folks. Our solar wind speeds are at 364.1 kilometers per second with a density of 3.0. Take a look at our sun, guess what? It's blank once again, that's 12 days in a row without sunspots, 211 days now in 2019 without sunspots. Our TCI coming in at 4.35, that's our upper atmosphere temperature, and the KP indices sitting at a 1 with a 24-hour max at a 3. And let's take a look at the SDO in motion, and we have a, some coronal hole action in the southern part of our star. Uh, we should see some kind of result from that on October 20th. Other than that, the star is all quiet. Now, there is a pretty big coronal hole forming or actually developing on the eastern limb of our sun. So we will be seeing that coming into view within the next step, couple of days. And I want to point out, if you guys look on the eastern limb where the, where the outside edge of the corona looks like there's a dent in it, that is an indication of a coronal hole. And it's a decent sized one when you can see the dent like that from this, from this particular angle. So... We'll keep our eyes on that as well, but let's go ahead. Oh, and our cosmic rays changed a little bit to 9.8%, which is down from last night at 10.1. Our record is 11.7, so we are inching closer and closer to record level cosmic rays in our atmosphere. Let's take a look at your national forecast for today, Tuesday, October 15th. And here is a quick look at our radar. I wanna take us in and zoom us in down to the south because this is where the action is today, folks. Um, yeah, we got some snow on the Canadian border, but <clears throat> showers and storms across the south, nothing severe, nothing major here. Just some typical rain showers, a little bit heavier in southern parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Take a zoom in here. Highway, I believe that's 74. Uh, it's 44, sorry. Uh, heading to 65 as well. Uh, you'll see some rain here in Greenville, Alabama. Troy is getting their share of the showers right now. Jackson, Mississippi, also getting ready to get some heavier rain showers as we speak at this moment. Now let's take a look at the minimum temperatures for tonight. Overnight, low temperatures, cold. Teens and 20s across the northwest, uh, 20s and 30s across the northern plains, Great Lakes, and yes, even the northeast will be lows in the 30s tonight uh, down in the deep south you're looking at lows in the 60s near 70s but overall it is definitely fall conditions throughout the united states the heat staying in florida texas louisiana arizona and california the rest of us are experiencing fall like weather um, 50s and 60s are high in the northeast and northwest and very cold in the northern plains north dakota and south dakota still in that winter like pattern where temperatures expected to reach in the 30s and 40s. So today, like I said, we have a chance for flooding in Mississippi and Alabama. The heavier of that rain is happening right now. Thunderstorms are possible for the rest of the Midwest and parts of Texas as well for today. And then tomorrow it gets a little bit more rainier in the Northeast, the Eastern half of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and the East Coast will see showers and thunderstorms. While a cold front pushing through, we will feel the temperature difference for sure here in the next couple of days if you live in the Midwest and the Northeast. The Northwest with another system moving in, mixed precipitation with rain on Wednesday, and then we have Thursday, a little bit more of that frozen precip stretching out across the Northwest into Colorado and Utah, believe it or not. Showers and thunderstorms still a possibility for the Northeast as well on Thursday, October 17th. And we've got a couple of areas of showers and storms in Florida and Texas as well. I want to show you really quick the tropics, the Atlantic. Tropical Depression 15 is still winds at 35 miles per hour, moving 12 miles per hour northwest, and the pressure has not changed. It's still at 1,006 millibars. These other systems here, still 10% chance of development and 30% here in the Gulf. Now, we went over this last night in our forecast for our long term outlook. And this system right here does look like it's gonna bring us rain here to Louisiana and Mississippi and the Alabama region. So again, we could definitely see some rain. I don't know about any kind of tropical flooding or anything like that, 
but three to four inches of rain locally higher is not being ruled out at this time. Again, we are a few days away from that taking place. Now, this is something a little out of the norm, but this is uh, part of the problem, folks. And it's unfortunate, but the Weather Channel basically is part of the machine of misleading information. The blob is back, in, and it is in the Pacific. Now, I'm gonna show you this video real quick, and you tell me what you don't like about it. Well, the water in part of the Pacific Ocean has been getting a little bit warmer, and there's now the, kind of this huge blob, this area where it is warmer than usual, okay? So uh, that's the area that we're looking at. It's kind of just off the west coast of the U.S., kind of extending up into the area pretty close to Alaska. And the weird thing about this is that it somewhat parallels what we saw a couple of years ago, between 2014 and 2016, that's what you see here. And it was kind of referred to as the blob, this whole area of warm water. And it had a couple different effects. First of all, um, salmon production was a lot lower than usual, okay? We had a lot less salmon than we usually have. It affected that industry. We had uh, sea lions that were getting kind of stranded on the shores of the west coast of the U.S. We had a big algae bloom out there as well. And the thing is, with these types of setups, it takes a very large scale change in the upper level pattern in order for it to change. So it takes quite a long time. And I don't think this is going to be changing anytime soon. All right. So what's the problem with this video here? Talking about sea lions being stranded, like blaming, blaming the warm temperatures on the sea lions being stranded on the ocean uh, or their coast here. Again, these people here, these are just paid, um, these are paid actors. And the problem with this is that they tell you these things. They don't tell you what the real effects are. Um, sorry, I was looking at something real quick. Again, the salmon not thriving in the warm waters, this and that. This is to add to that global warming fear. The blob is back, warm temperatures. They compared it to 2014, which by the way, 2014, we saw some record breaking cold in that winter. So, the polar vortex, we had negative 17 for a high in the Midwest. That was negative 17 for a high in the Midwest. January, in the middle of January, actually January 21st, I remember it clearly, negative eight degrees for a high. That was already four days of negatives for highs. Uh, we had very, very, very cold snap for about two or three weeks. We had two different polar vortexes in 2014. But again, for this guy to sit here and abuse his platform. And what I mean by that is that he's telling you that he doesn't think that this blob is gonna be changing cold anytime soon for a very, very long time, but doesn't offer any reasons why, doesn't offer what the real repercussions are from this. And also, let's also, folks, you guys know this, you follow this channel. The Alaskan area, the Northwest Pacific, heats up during grand solar minimums. This is not uncommon. This does not mean that man is changing the climate. This does not mean that our carbon emissions is heating up the oceans once again. And I think it's very irresponsible for Weather Channel to send out one of their talking heads. But people watch this channel to get their weather every day. And the average Joe doesn't know any better. And now they're being fed this horse malarkey. The blob is back. It's not going away. This could mean bad things. All of these are negative. All of these are claims without explanation. This was a 59 second video. There is no way that you could even come close to even trying to describe what's happening in the oceans right now. Very irresponsible of the, of the mainstream media, very irresponsible of the Weather Channel for coming out and pushing fear and not really truly understanding what they're talking about. They are just TV meteorologists most of these guys, I would be shocked if they even have a degree in weather. I think a lot of these guys are actors and they read a script. Uh, there's one guy I really enjoy on the Weather Nation. His name is Steve Glazer. One of the best. Best in the business. But other than that, there's a few of you out there. I see you guys look like you're reading a script. And this was one of these produced, hey, let's scare people a little bit. 
that warm blob is back. It's going to cause all these problems in the Northwest Pacific, blah, 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 global warming. And they didn't say it, but you know where they're going with this here. They're talking about how it's heating up over here in the Northwest Pacific. They're going to let you know that everything's going to be bad because of this blob. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, if that blob, they're going to correlate that blob from 2014, then we better watch out this winter because we had some really cold shots of air from the Arctic several times that winter. And yes, that was during Solar Max. I get it. But we were also heading down from a Solar Max as well. So, I don't know, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more Grand Solar Minimum News update. Until then, we will talk soon, guys. Take care. Don't believe the hype. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.